And we're going to be talking now about Dr. Wallach's research with uh, cystic fibrosis and muscular dystrophy. Dr. Wallach is 74 years old. He gives over 300 free lectures a year, spreading his message of health recovery through science-based, clinically verified medical nutrition to anybody who is wise enough to listen. It is the 25th day of July 2013. I'm interviewing uh, my friend, uh, mentor, and colleague, Dr. Joel Wallach, right now about his experience with uh, cystic fibrosis and, more importantly, muscular dystrophy. Uh, welcome aboard, Doc. It's always a pleasure to uh, spend some time with you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Glidden. Appreciate it. And uh, uh, let's go to war. Okay, let's go. So everybody that's listening has the backstory about your career, uh, the $25 million of federally funded research that you did, and uh, the fact that it's in the Smithsonian right now. And I'd like you to tell people the story of the stint that happened while you were at Yerkes Primate Research Center in Atlanta, Georgia. Let's hear that story. Well, the short version of it is in 1977 at Yerkes, I uh, was a pathologist uh, doing a service pathology for all the studies and experiments of deaths from what would be called natural causes in the primates so there at the facility as well as uh, ends of experiments where they wanted to know what the implants or the drugs did to the animals. And um, I ran into a six-month-old failure to thrive monkey that um, had some un unusual lesions in the pancreas and liver and lungs that I had never seen in an animal before and just uh, took a couple of uh, days of looking around and realized it was cystic fibrosis, which is a disease of children, thought to be the iconic, and I'm going to cough here a second, <coughs> excuse me, thought to be the iconic example of uh, Mendelian genetically transmitted disease. Um, they claim that, uh, and this is, um, this is theory, but they claim that, that um, one-fourth, one-quarter of Americans uh, carry the gene for cystic fibrosis, and it's the most common most iconic uh, Mendelian genetically transmitted disease. Well, it turns out when I actually tracked it back, and you have to remember that I'd already done uh, some 20,000 autopsies, 17,000 and some change, and over 454 species of animals, including various species of primates, and uh, 3,000 humans, and 10 million chemistries, and 10 million slides with special stains. And um, I, I backtracked things. I did blood tests, and I was looking for either nutrition or pollution, and sure enough, it turned out that uh, the cystic fibrosis in this monkey was caused by a nutritional deficiency of the trace metal selenium, and I did biopsies of uh, kind of cousin monkeys in the same facility that were the same age, and they weren't looking well. They, they also uh, clinically were not doing well, and by taking biopsies of their pancreas and their liver and their lungs, I found that they did, in fact, also have cystic fibrosis, so I was convinced, <clears throat> and we treated them with the selenium, and they all got better very quickly. And um, I, I kind of kept it close to my vest at first, and then <clears throat> when uh, everybody agreed that it was cystic fibrosis, all the experts, and I got an invitation to give a presentation at the uh, National Institute of Health at an animal model um, event, because um, it was the big news story. Everybody's in the news with this thing all over the place, 1,700 newspapers. 2020 was just a big thing. Uh, Emory University made big news releases all over. And everybody was excited that uh, the NASA program that I was working with in that particular colony of, of rhesus monkeys had discovered something unusual and fun and perhaps helpful to humans. Well, when I told them in my abstract for the presentation of the animal models thing that uh, I could reproduce, I didn't say that I, I knew it was cystic fibrosis. I just said I could reproduce these animals uh, that um, had been diagnosed with cystic fibrosis first uh, animals, and I could... Uh, reproduce this. I knew what caused it in these animals and I could reproduce it and they fired me um, just summarily. I said, well, don't I get a chance to defend my findings like you would with a PhD uh, um, defense of your research? And they said, no, you're just fired because, you know, you're so way out there that uh, everybody knows it's genetic and if you say you can reproduce it, we've all claimed it's genetic, you're going to embarrass everybody and so you're just gone. I didn't have a contract or anything. Talk to lawyers and there was no chance to get my job back. Um, actually got a job uh, within about a month by going to various uh, laboratory animal events uh, and I got a job as the uh, director 
uh, of the uh, animal research facility at St. Louis University in the medical school. And I thought, okay, this is it. I finally, I'm in charge here, plus being the pathologist, I'll be able to control this cystic fibrosis thing. And before I got my box unpacked with my reference books, the dean of the school came down and said, oh, they've contacted me because they made out a news release that they'd hired me. They said, uh, if, if uh, we hire you, they're going to defund our federal um, research grants, and so I, you got to go, Wally. And so it was very obvious that uh, this was not going to work anymore. And a good friend of mine, John Troxell, who who'd graduated vet school before I did, um, said, look, I'll help you. And he made a big uh, uh, news release and everything about everything that was going on. And um, I got calls from um, the, the lobbyists from the National Health Federation, uh, Clinton Miller, and he had me speak at uh, Chicago at the National Health Federation, which is an annual meeting of alternative uh, health people as well as individuals who are interested in alternative health, which I, I've never heard of these people because I was in standard medical research. And um, it just so happened that the naturopathic school from Portland, Oregon um, had um, a, a booth there looking for students to come to the NCNM, the National College of Naturopathic Medicine, the oldest naturopathic school in uh, the United States in Portland, Oregon, and they're also looking for staff members. And they asked me to come speak to their continuing education, um, CME, um, continuing medical education for the naturopathic doctors to keep their licenses. And I spoke there and I showed them diseases that were caused in animals by nutritional deficiency, showed them slides of the same diseases in humans and showed how you could uh, reverse these diseases in humans, treating them nutritionally like we did in animals. They liked that and they hired me as the um, person to teach nutrition to the freshman, sophomore, junior, and um, senior naturopathic doctors. Now that's a remarkable story, Dr. Wallach. So let me just kind of summarize just to make sure I've got this clear. So while you were working at Yerkes, you discovered that cystic fibrosis could cross species lines and that it was not a chromosomal genetic thing, it was actually uh, uh, a break in the chromosomal structure. It wasn't a gene, it was a damage to a chromosome and that it could be easily reversed and when you published your findings or brought your findings to them, they said this just doesn't uh, coexist with our way of thinking about things. You're fired, get out of here, go pack in. Is that, that's what they did, right? That's a short version of it, that's correct. All right, it's, so now you're in naturopathic school and you become a naturopathic physician, get your naturopathic medical degree and start uh, applying what you've found with all of the animal studies with humans and tell us how that parlayed into your experience with uh, muscular dystrophy. Okay, well as a veterinarian of course, muscular dystrophy, uh, aka white muscle disease in calves and sheep and goats and um, all kinds of wild ruminants, um, is a, a disease that's easily um, reversed by supplementing with selenium, is, uh, selenium. And, um, um, and there's a cardiomyopathy heart disease that goes along with that which is a selenium deficiency in pigs they call it um, mulberry heart disease and because that's what it looked like to farmers when they cut the dead pig, pigs open they looked like they, their hearts were mulberries and um, <clears throat> um, my mother actually funded the research uh, which my wife, uh, Dr. Milan, who's Chinese, uh, my, my mother fu funded the research for Milan and I to go to China, in Qishan, China in 1990, to do autopsies on kids that had died of um, what was called Qishan disease, which is the cardiomyopathy heart disease, uh, which is known by the World Health Organization as a selenium deficiency. It was my reasoning, if I was correct, that the cystic fibrosis in monkeys was caused by the um, deficiency of selenium and we knew that the cardiomyopathy heart disease in humans was caused by a selenium deficiency. In kids under the age of 10 there would have to be some of those kids that also had cystic fibrosis. Now it was supposed to be a genetic disease of Eastern Europeans, white Eastern Europeans uh, was not thought of to be a genetic disease of uh, Orientals of any kind or black people of any kind or Hispanics it was just white people Eastern Europe and so I went there and did autopsies on 1,700 kids under the age of 10 um, at the um, uh, various university, Harbin University, Keishan University, and so on. And did 1,700, did all the chemistries, and um, uh, found that 35% had cystic fibrosis and 100% had muscular dystrophy, aka white muscle disease. 
wrote it up, international papers of the um, uh, Trace Mineral Research Institute's um, monthly journal. Uh, it was published in chi several Chinese journals in English as well as in Mandarin and Cantonese, uh, along with the co-authors, a couple of uh, doctors, uh, Dr. Milan, who my wife knew, and they were um, uh, instrumental in, in getting this done. And um, uh, I've presented all these papers to the Mastrucci Foundation, the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, universities all over the place that had uh, medical schools and, and treated pediatric patients and got zero response. And um, uh, again, to make a long story short, I was kind of starving trying to treat kids with these diseases because uh, everybody knew that the doctors knew best and everybody went that direction. So I had to learn how to treat other diseases, arthritis, have a pressure, diabetes, arthritis, obesity, um, uh, dementias, eye diseases, blindness, and so on, um, gluten intolerance. And in one of the um, events that I did in Lancaster, Pennsylvania for the Amish communities, and this is about that same time in the 90s, uh, even before the, the uh, Dead Doctors Don't Lie audio cassette tape came out in 1993, in Lancaster County, I was asked to go see a little Amish family that had a, a small boy, six years old, with mustard dystrophy. And he could only lay on the floor. Uh, he could move like a log. He would roll like a log using his head and neck to, to roll himself over. When he get to a chair, he could pull himself up with his arms and upper body. But if he let go of the chair, he'd fall down. And we put him on the 90 essential nutrients, got him off of, of uh, gluten because he had a uh, little rosacea on his cheeks and everything. So put him on a gluten-free diet. Um, got him on the 90 essential nutrients of extra selenium and three months later I hadn't had any calls back from them and I just was so busy uh, didn't think much about it and I'm back in that same Amish community in Lancaster County and uh, Pennsylvania and um, we're in this Amish church it was a hot August night and the front door was open the back door was open and it was lit up with it was Coleman lanterns because they don't have electricity and no air conditioning. It was very, very hot. Everybody's in their shirt sleeves rolled up and uh, no jackets and no ties, obviously. And, and uh, here comes this half a dozen little boys running through the front door of the church, right down the middle of the church in between the pews and out the back door kicking a soccer ball. And guess who's in the lead kicking the soccer ball? The same six-year-old kid who three months earlier couldn't stand up. Now he's playing soccer with the best of them. And I realized that um, this was something it would work in kids. And over, to, over the time, uh, I'd run into a mustard dystrophy kid here and there. Uh, we learned how to diagnose it early, even without biopsies, by having these kids squat down, you know, kind of like uh, doing squats with the weights, just squat down. And if they could get up without touching the ground, they were probably okay, or at least not in advanced stages. But if they couldn't get up without putting their hands on the ground or holding on to something else from a squatting position, they had really advanced mustard dystrophy. And again, the kids under 10 years old, usually within weeks or months, we could reverse it just with the 90 gluten-free diet and supplementing extra selenium. And if they've been in wheelchairs and they have contracted tendons and things, obviously it takes a little bit of, of um, time. Actually, I had uh, one fellow by the name of Amos. He's uh, 39 years old. He's been in a wheelchair for 20-something years. And um, uh, he couldn't um, do much. He had to be wheeled around. He couldn't work his own wheelchair. And we were talking to 150 families with um, mushroom history patients in Lancaster. Uh, no, excuse me, it was in um, Indiana. It was in, yeah, it was in Indiana. And uh, we had about 150 mushroom history families. And the, the very skeptical father said, okay, Wallach, when's Amos there going to get out of his wheelchair? Well, Amos had been on our program for 90 days, and he whispered to me that he could stand up without canes and he could walk a little bit. And I said, okay, you just shut your eyes like you always do. Let them wheel you against the wall and uh, don't say anything and just respond to me. If I, if I get asked about it, I'll just, you just follow my lead. And he got this little twinkle because this is the first time in his life he'd ever been in a, on anything, right? And so this guy said, when's Amos going to stand up? So I did my Moses thing. I turned around, pointed my finger at him, and I screamed at him. I said, Amos, stand up. He stood up. He opened his eyes for the first time that anybody had ever seen in 20-something years. Did a little jig, ran around the place. And, I mean, just everybody's talking in Dutch for the <laughs> funniest thing I've ever seen. And uh, gave hope to everybody. And, of course, now between uh, yourself and Marvin Ropp and I, we're working with the Amish communities. Some of them have five kids. Three will have mustard two will have cystic fibrosis. 
uh, you know, it's ge genetically impossible, and so you just know that there's a random chance. And of course, uh, both the cystic fibrosis children, the most history children, they can die from cardiomyopathy heart disease, which is also a slain deficiency. That kind of brings us up to date. Um, we have a lot of experience now with literally hundreds of um, uh, mushroom kids. I probably should tell the Jerry Lewis story here. Yeah, that's a good idea, Doctor. Why don't we segue into the Jerry Lewis, and then we're going to end. Okay. Well, basically, the short version of it is because we were so excited about what we were doing, uh, we already knew the cause, prevention, and cure of, of mushroom dystrophy and cystic fibrosis, and um, said, okay, um, we need to send this to Jerry Lewis, and we contacted his office and told his assistant, Violet, that we didn't need any money. We weren't asking Jerry for any money, but it just seemed the righteous thing to do if Jerry wanted to be the one to make the announcement that the cure for mushroom had been found, that he should have the opportunity to do that. And so we sent it to them with a bunch of our records, both by email and hard copy. And uh, he got excited, apparently, and he took it to the Mushroom Foundation Medical Research Committee and asked them to review my stuff. And they looked me up and they said, well, Wallach's too controversial. We're not going to waste our time even looking at this stuff. And uh, he apparently had told them, look, I've helped you raise a billion dollars for research in mushroom and um, we haven't really gotten a lot of progress. And if you'll look at his stuff and tell me there's nothing to it, I won't bring it up again. But I, I, I don't want you to dismiss it until you at least look at it. And he says, I insist. And they fired Jerry Lewis. They fired Jerry Lewis because he wanted them to look at something that they hadn't done. And it's really a travesty of all the stuff that Jerry Lewis has done for mushroom history. Jerry's kids, of course, um, just hurt everybody's feelings. And... It's, it's devastating to Jerry, and so we've been in great contact with his assistant, uh, Violet, many, many times, and of course we're going to send um, uh, Todd Harrison's uh, video um, of himself and, and others that he's been you know, tracking what he's doing uh, since he's been on our program, and so we're really excited to hear back from Jerry once he sees Todd Harrison's video. Dr. Wallach, as always, unbelievably inspiring and extremely eye-opening. Ladies and gentlemen, the front door of medicine is guarded by the pharmaceutical industry and an intractably, intellectually old-fashioned and stubborn methodology. Uh, we are on uh, a campaign here, a crusade of sorts, to bring Dr. Wallach's message of health recovery through science-based, clinically verified medical nutrition to anyone who is brave enough and wise enough to listen. Uh, stay tuned, folks. There's lots more coming. Dr. Wallach, thanks for everything that you do. We'll see you around campus. And where are you going to be tonight? Okay, well, tonight I'm in Manchester, New Hampshire. All right, go get him, Skipper. Say hi to all those New Englanders for me, and I'll see you in the future. Take care, buddy. God bless you. Thank you so much, Dr. Glidden. Always a pleasure. Pretty remarkable, eh? Well, that's Dr. Joel Wallach uh, telling us uh, about his experience with muscular dystrophy. So let's pick it up where we left off and uh, try to get a little more knowledge base here about what we're really up to. Okay? Very, very good. So this is the research that I was alluding to uh, that Dr. Wallach did. It's called The Diseases of Exotic Animals. It's currently in the Smithsonian Institution. It took 12 years. It cost $25 million. Doc did 26,000 autopsies, 10 million blood chemistries and histopathologies, and his uh, publication is in the Smithsonian Institution in the United States. It's a national treasure, for goodness sake. And here's what. $25 million of federally funded research discovered that the majority of chronic diseases are not genetic, that they're caused, excuse me, they're caused by nutrient deficiencies. And how's the sound, folks? Are we good on the sound? Okay, thank you very much. Sorry about that. The majority of chronic diseases are fixed with uh, nutrients, high blood pressure, it's not genetic. Type 2 diabetes, it's not genetic. Cystic fibrosis, it's not genetic. Muscular dystrophy, it's not genetic. They're nutritional deficiency diseases. And this is the meat and potatoes of what Dr. Wallach discovered. This is what is essential for health. 60 minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 amino acids, and 2 essential fatty acids. This is collectively referred to as the 90 for life. 
90 essential nutrients necessary for life. The problem with medical nutrition is, or with nutrition in general, is that it's impossible to get all 90 essential nutrients from food. You can't do it. It's not just tricky. It's not just uh, uh, improbable. It's impossible, and this is why. The lion's share of the 90 essential nutrients are minerals. Minerals are only found in the soil. Plants cannot make minerals. Animals cannot make minerals. Here's a map of selenium deposition in the United States. Remember, selenium is the nutrient necessary in order to support and promote the structure and function of the muscles and the lungs. And on this map, if it's pinkish, there's lots of selenium. If it's yellowish, there's a little bit of selenium. If it's greenish, there's less and less. And if it's gray or white, there's hardly any. So you can see here that if you're uh, hoping to get your selenium needs fulfilled just from eating plants and vegetables and drinking cow's milk, you're not going to be able to do it because it is completely dependent on where in the world the plant or the the plant was grown or the animal was eating grass from that soil. Now remember there are 60 minerals that the human body needs. Selenium is just one. There are 59 other maps which are like this, but they're all different. There's no place on God's green earth where all of the 60 minerals are found in the topsoil in one place, which leads to the startling conclusion that everybody is nutrient deficient. Everybody, and by everybody, I mean everybody. Here's the rundown. If this tank represents your body's nutrient needs, in order for your eyes and your ears and your nose and your mouth and your lungs and your kidneys and your heart and your lungs and your muscles and everything to work, that tank has to be topped off every day with the 90 essential nutrients. Topped off. But because nobody knows this, and because it's impossible to get all your nutrient needs met from eating food, most people have about 30 per one third of their nutrient tank filled at any given time. If you're not supplementing with the proper nutrients, you're about 30% full. You can secure about 30% of your body's nutrient needs from eating food. But here comes the stress of life. And guess what? The stress of life whittles away at your reserves. Now you're running on fumes. And when you're running on nutrient fumes, things begin to break. Here's what Dr. Wallach's research uncovered. High blood pressure, the leading cause. Is it a hydrochlorothiazide deficiency? Is it a lisinopril deficiency? Is it genetic? No. It's a deficiency in minerals, calcium and magnesium. Ringing in the ears, it's a calcium deficiency. Vertigo, it's a calcium deficiency. Type 2 diabetes, multiple mineral deficiencies, congestive heart failure, vitamin B1, asthma, essential fatty acid deficiencies, swelling in the legs, a protein deficiency, obesity, multiple nutrient deficiencies, and of course, cystic fibrosis and multiple sclerosis and muscular dystrophy. Selenium deficiency diseases, period. Now, this is where it's all, this is where it all comes from, ladies and gentlemen. And this is the rhesus monkey that Dr. Wallach discovered uh, with the first case of non-human cystic fibrosis. And when Dr. Wallach discovered this, of course, Yerkes Primate Research Center fired him because his findings were inconsistent with their current methodological view, philosophical view of how the body works. It's like Christopher Columbus uh, coming back to Spain and saying, guess what, everybody, the earth isn't flat. It's like Galileo saying, guess what, everybody? It's not the Earth that's at the center of the solar system. It's the sun. Well, guess what? This information about multiple uh, muscular dystrophy and cystic fibrosis being not related to genes but damaged chromosomes fell on deaf ears, mostly because the medical marketplace is not free and it is completely controlled by the pharmaceutical industry. And this is why Dr. Wallach, in his wisdom, set his company up, Longevity, as a networked business. What are we attempting to do with Longevity? We are attempting to form a grassroots coalition of the informed, people just like you, who learn the truth 
of uh, health recovery through the application of science-based, clinically verified medical nutrition who bring holistic wisdom to bear on their physical complaints. Our fundamental supposition, your body knows how to fix itself, your body wants to fix itself, and most of the time all you need to do is give the body the stuff it needs to fix itself, the 90 essential nutrients. Healing is easy, ladies and gentlemen. Surgery is complicated. You've been uh, brainwashed, for lack of a better word, by the pharmaceutical industry. You have been socialized to believe that healing is a complicated, sophisticated process that should only be attempted in high-tech, multi-million dollar hospitals. It's nonsense. Surgery is complicated. Healing is easy. In order to support and promote the structure and function of the human body, you need one healthy start pack for 100 pounds of body weight per month. One healthy start pack delivers to your body all 90 essential nutrients in extremely absorbable, bioavailable nutritional supplement forms. Guess what? Remember, we practice holistic medicine. If you have a bone or a joint problem, guess what we recommend? The healthy body, bone, and joint pack. If you're suffering from a concentration problem, a, a heart problem, some type of cardiovascular illness, guess what? To support and promote the structure and function of your brain and heart, we recommend the healthy body, brain, and heart pack. If you're having trouble in the digestive area, guess what? Ulcerative colitis, irritable bowel, heartburn. To support and promote the structure and function of your digestive system, a healthy body digestion pack would be a very good place to start. If you have a blood sugar issue, a healthy body blood sugar pack is a very, very, very good place to start. And what we're up to tonight in this webinar is specifically to talk about muscular dystrophy. Specifically about muscular dystrophy. Now, when we're talking about muscular dystrophy, what do we do from a holistic vantage point? We provide the human body with the raw materials necessary to support and promote proper muscular development, structure, and function. This is what I think you thought your MD did, but they don't. Your MD is just trained to deliver drugs to manage and suppress symptoms. So remember, healing is easy, and Wallach's done all the heavy lifting. In order to support and promote healthy structure and function of your musculoskeletal system, it's a walk in the park. The recommendation, one healthy start pack for 100 pounds of body weight per month, one bottle of selenium for 50 pounds of body weight per month, one bottle of HGH Youth Complex for 100 pounds of bottle per month, and we don't give more than four bottles of selenium at any moment in time. This is it. This is our recipe based on $25 million of federally funded research, thousands of autopsies, and decades of clinical experience by the most researched, most published, most experienced, most lauded naturopathic physician in the world, Dr. Joel Wallach. And if there's extra money in the bank, to that program, you can add one bottle of Z-Radical for 100 pounds of body weight per month, or I, what I prefer is four bottles of Z-Radical a month. There's an active ingredient in this product called Fucoidin, and Fucoidin is a sea vegetable extract. There are over 1,100 published research studies on the positive benefits of Fucoidin. Over 1,100 published researches abstracts, research papers on the positive effects of the sea vegetable fucoidin. It is a very good add-on to our supporting and promoting the health structure and function of the muscular system. And what we recommend is a, 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 a two-fold program, ladies and gentlemen. You give your body the raw materials it needs to fix itself, and you eliminate foods that hurt the body. These foods should not even be looked at, let alone eaten. Wheat, barley, rye, and oats, oil, fried food, carbonated drinks with a meal, well-done red meat, meat that has nitrates added to it, and the skins of baked potatoes, yams, and sweet potatoes. These foods deliver net negative effects to the human body. They deliver net negative effects to the human body. And who have you listened to for the last 80 years for advice about what to eat. You've listened to Betty Crocker. You've listened to Monsanto. 
You've listened to people with skin in the game. You've listened to MDs who have no training, no respect, no appreciation, and no experience with medical nutrition. You've let them tell you what to eat. And like Dr. Phil says, hey, how's that working for you? 